All right, so we're gonna jump right into this. Um, I'm gonna break this up into a bunch of little 10 minute sections, mostly because uh, this is a freeware, trialware version of Bandicam, and it only records 10 minute sections, but that also coincides with the average attention span of most people when it comes to videos. So, um, yeah, we're gonna jump right in. So, uh, what's gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up into different chunks of things and kind of explain things out. So, um, yeah, so when I when I hit my target button, in this case it's tab, um, you can ignore this for triggerable delay. That was just for debug purposes. Like, um, I had a bug somewhere in the line that something with the variable was getting flipped on or off before... Uh, because there was a loop going on. Anyways, it's fixed now, but I don't technically need this. This just keeps people from spamming it. It's kind of like a typomatic rate. So you hit your button, and um, it's going to check to see if your target's locked, which by default it's not. So, you know, game starts up, there's no locked targets. You probably go in and do it on the, like, on, you know, creation or on level load, something like that. You could, you know, ensure that all your variables are set and that it's not going to throw any weird initial conditions into the mix. So, um, the first trace that we're going to do in this case, and keep in mind, like I said in the, the introduction, uh, I'm going to change this order a little bit. I think I'm going to put a, a fourth one in here. It's going to prioritize the actual camera dot product, kind of. Maybe not even a dot product. I might do a camera. A capsule trace or something like that. We'll see. We'll see what I do. But um, but for now, you know, these these three are the the three systems that I'm going to go over, and a few other things. So in the line trace here, you can ignore this stuff down here. I was doing something slightly different with it uh, before. So it comes in. Uh, it's going to clear. This this array, by the way, I should go ahead and say this. Uh, my targets within radius here. Let me expand some more room here because this is kind of hogging all the real estate here. All right, um, I can go ahead and do that down here too. And over here, don't really need to see any of this. I just need to see what's on here. So it um, you know clears this. There could be you know something else, the residual thing, you know something like that within the, the engine that might possibly. Okay, that's gonna really drive my OCD insane here. I don't, I don't know. I guess I'll just have to live with it. Um. Anyways, it's good housekeeping. Just you know clear this out. Go ahead and clear it out and get rid of it and make sure it's completely empty when we first do this trace. So it's gonna come in. It's gonna do a line trace for objects. Uh, like I said before, down here with this part to ignore, um, see this line trace for objects does it from the camera, whereas I kind of wanted to do a hybrid where it do a double trace where it would shoot from the camera first and get an impact point like like you know some kind of vector here, and I was going to use that as the end point and shoot from the player. But I just I'm being lazy and I haven't implemented it yet. So um, you know that way it shoots from the actual player. So if there was like cover or something behind them, um, it wouldn't go ahead and hit it or target it anyways. So it comes in, you know, it's just doing a simple line trace from the camera. Uh, you're getting the forward vector shooting off into infinity you could change this number here to be you know whatever your target radius or target range is um you got a um you know enumeration here uh i'm just storing you know pawn in there uh, i only want to i'm only concerned about hitting pawns i mean you change that to whatever you want or whatever your project calls for um so we come through we do a valid check just make sure there's something in there and that it's valid. Um, because if it's not... Oh, I got, I got a burp or something like that. Uh, so if it's not, it will go ahead and you know fail this cast. And, um, well, not cast, I guess you could just call it you know trace. Um, I, I'm used to referring to this kind of stuff as ray trace, or you know, line trace, ray trace, whatever. Um, 
just shooting a beam off somewhere and waiting for it to impact something. So anyways, um, so if it is valid, it's going to go ahead and you know convert this into you know an array entry, put it into our save variable. It's going to flag the the camera as being hard targeted in this case. <coughs> Sorry about that. I've got a cold and I'm trying to uh, not cough. And uh, anyways. So yeah, and then in this case here, I got it to set to print the um, the the target that we got. So uh, index by zero. Uh, remember, arrays are numbered differently. You've got n minus one. So if there are you know three items in an array, uh, they're going to go zero, one, two, rather than your typical thinking of one, two, three. So, you know, or index 0 equals the first item in the array. So, and if this reads negative 1, then it's an empty array. Um, so it's going to go ahead and print that. And then, yeah, uh, my variable here, it's going to set this to uh, true, you know, camera hard target. I just called this line. I could change this to camera line trace, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's going to print and say that we're trace locked. And uh, let me go ahead and delete this. No, I'm not going to delete it. I use that for debug. So um, then after it does that, it comes out and it's going to lock the, the target here. And um, I'm not going to worry about all this up here yet. I'm going to explain that in its own video. And um, so anyways, it flags us as being target locked because we now have a target. We're going to lock onto it. So then it calls this uh, uh, target lock on blueprint interface. And um, I'm not going to explain a whole lot about this uh, other than the fact that, you know, it's a blueprint interface. It allows you to uh, interface multiple blu blueprints together. And in this case, it's going to be the enemy pawns. It will get, you know, it, it's just going to be used to trigger. Um, the little particle effects and you know all that stuff through a flip flop that just gets toggled on and off. But yeah, it's blueprint to blueprint communication. So uh, it's going to take that the entry, it's going to send it and say, "Hey, lock on." And then it's going to um, you know finish the rest of this off. It's going to enter the gate. It's going to you know change the camera rotation and all that jazz. So um, and then if you hit the button again. It's going to unlock, which this I'm going to change because I want to be able to tab target between multiple targets without deselecting one first. Uh, but for now, you know, uh, I've got it set up a certain way. So it's just going to untarget and it's going to come back into here and it's going to re-trigger this, say, hey, unlock the target. Um, so turn off your little fancy particles and, you know, all that. And it's going to re-toggle this gate and disable all this. So in the next video, I'm going to go over the, uh, the dot target locking, and then after that, radial targeting, and then I'll kind of explain, uh, you know, this range check and a few other little odds and ends. So um, thanks for watching.